All right, guys, uh, welcome back to another video. So on this video today, I'm going to do a very short introduction uh, to state tree events. So you may have noticed that we have these transitions uh, trigger type on event, and it takes in an event tag. Now, the priority uh, is for what I... I believe that the priority is for when you have multiple uh, on event transitions and you need to let it know uh, which one is of a higher priority. So if two events happen to fire at the same time, then it needs to know which one to choose. And that's what the priority is for. It's like a, a safety net uh, from my understanding. Uh, so you can also have it delay. So after uh, this event fires, uh, then you can have it wait for so long before it performs the transition. And that's pretty much the rundown on how to set up the transition itself. Now, how does it send, uh, how does it receive these events? That's actually not that difficult. So over here on my patrol relay, I have this little helper function here that I can call somewhere and pass in a tag. And I'm actually using that on an overlap event. Uh, so whenever a character overlaps uh, with this actor, uh, it'll fire this event. And this is just a patrol relay. So whenever he steps inside of this, but before he reaches this, uh, it'll fire an event that causes him to go ahead and start going to the next one. It, it's, it just makes the patrol look more continuous uh, without having to run anything on a tick. So, uh, that's why I used a state tree event in this example. And so I'm just passing in this event tag and you'll notice that this event tag matches the uh, one that this one is waiting for. And that's the thing, that's the important thing. So because I have my uh, state tree on a state tree AI component on my AI controller, I, I am uh, getting the AI controller from the actor that overlapped and I'm looking for a state tree AI component on it. Uh, you could probably, it might be a little bit more performant friendly uh, if you were to set up a blueprint interface uh, to grab this instead. Uh, so that's totally up to you. But I'm just getting, because this is going to search all the components and look for a state tree AI com, uh, uh, component. So a blooper interface might be more performant. But the important thing is, is that once you get uh, a reference to a state tree, rather uh, a state tree AI component or a regular state tree, uh, then you can, any state tree actually, any kind of state tree, you can call a send state tree event on it. And on this send state tree event, you can do a make state tree event and you can pass it in a tag and an origin. Now the origin I believe is just for the log, uh, the output log in case something goes wrong, it'll print the tag in the origin. But if you make this a local variable, you'll notice that you can also send a payload. I don't know much about that yet. I haven't actually, uh, I, I don't really understand it yet. So, uh, I'm not going to cover that. I may uh, come back and cover that at a later date whenever I understand exactly what the payload is supposed to be for. But for most purposes, I don't think you're going to need uh, to send a payload. So for general purposes, you just need to send an event tag to that state tree. That state tree will uh, receive that event tag automatically. Now, if you're trying to... Uh, if you're trying to uh, set up such a thing on a smart object, uh, then it might make more sense for you to send a slot event. This is similar uh, to a state tree event, but it sends, I think it first gets handled by the slot and then it sends it to the state tree. But in both cases, both the slot and the state tree itself will receive a, a copy of the event. And so it does work similar, but with the, the send slot event, 
You also need to make sure to add a listen slot events task because if you don't, the state tree will never receive its copy of the uh, event. So uh, just know that's the difference between the two of them, but uh, that's basically the rundown on it. All you have to do is uh, get a handle to the uh, state tree component and just send a state tree event. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, also, uh, I'll have a link up here uh, for the video that covers all that other stuff. It'll be a general rundown of most everything in state trees outside of this. Uh, the only thing, the only other thing I don't cover in that one uh, is linked assets, and I'll go ahead and explain that to you now. Actually, so a linked asset, it it just allows you to link to another state tree. So, for example, whenever I use a smart object, I will stop on this state, and I won't transition to anything else until after this bench state tree has uh, stopped. So after we've left this bench state tree, then it will fire a success or fail on this task. That's basically kind of what happens whenever you use a linked asset. So that's the rundown on that too. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.